Now lay this photo mat open. <laughs> I do want to thank you all for your patience. We are now obviously ready to go. I am Howard Stringer, and as president of CBS Entertainment, it is my singular pleasure and a great moment for us to be able to bring this great star to CBS, David Letterman. Yeah. I never dated Amy Fisher. I, 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 I fixed her car, I helped her with her homework, and that's all. All right, thank you. All right, uh, I'll take some questions, and then uh, uh, Colin Powell will be in here and update you on the bombing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do want to thank uh, CBS for their uh, for their support and uh, and of course for their generosity. I mean, uh, wow, this is a, a deal that would put a smile on Jack Menny's face, and that's uh, in the condition he's in right now. So. <laughs> Does GE make the best managers for a television network? <laughs> 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 What was the question? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, no, you know, I don't know about that, but uh, they make a darn fine toaster oven. <laughs> Dave, I, I have a terrible case of the hiccups. Oh, really? You, you tried holding your breath? Everything. I oh, I got an idea. Hold on. What are you doing? Here, just put that on your head there and uh, breathe, uh, breathe normally there, Paul. Okay. I'm breathing. <laughs> How's that? Feel, uh, feel any better? been something I ate. <laughs> it's bloody marvelous. <laughs> Tonight's show, Johnny's guest host tonight is Jay Leno. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Leno. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. That's nice to hear. Now, did you all see in the paper? Now, there's a survey said that you're safer and now this is true, you're safer on an airplane than you are in your own bathroom. Do you believe that? Safe? I mean, do you, do you think that's true? I don't know, you know, I've never slipped on the toilet seat and fallen 35,000 feet. <laughs> you know, I mean, I never adjusted the shower rod and had a fireball come out and incinerate me, so you can imagine that. That's very weird. So we... So, why can't we just throw money at one of them? What sort of offer do you have in mind? What does it matter? Late night's making $70 million a year for NBC. Where's our bloody piece? That would have been Mr. Sajak. Oh, Christ. What a disaster. He's got a lock on every blue-haired old biddy who ever watched Wheel of Fortune. Now, do you know how many of our stations are canceling him for our senior? It's like they're canceling him before we can. And look at these fucking numbers when Leno fills in for Carson. And Letterman. NBC has him signed through 93. Well, what about Leno? NBC only has a one-year holding deal with Jay. That's nothing. He could be ripe. All right, so let's steal him. I mean, we can give him a show now, for Christ's sakes. I'll push Sajak over a cliff if we could get Leno. They might fight for him. Let them. They can't fight equally for Leno and Letterman. I'm not gonna offer them both Carson's spot when he retires. This is the best opportunity we have ever had to break NBC's stranglehold on late night. Okay, Howard. Let's go stir something up. And you know, we can knock it out in one fell swoop. Oh! Sure. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's bouncy up here. Hey. <laughs> we gotta do a say, commercial here, boys and girls. We'll be right back with more uh, Sandra Bernard. <laughs> I'm having a blast. Thanks for having me back on, Dave. How you doing? What do you want, the number of my therapist? You should be thrilled with your life. Dave, 
It wasn't that bad, Dave. Uh, okay, we had a little trouble with the first pick. Cassandra was good, and you were good with her. No, I sucked, Morty. And the whole show sucked because I sucked. I don't, I don't belong in network television. I belong in the Muncie driving gravel. You got great laughs. Oh, bullshit. If that audience were any deader, there'd be guys in the lab coats going through harvesting organs. Those dorks at NBC probably steered up the crowd waiting in line for Donahue by mistake. It's their way of sending a message. What message? Oh, come on, the message. Like giving Jay the uh, job as permanent guest that host. That means nothing. They didn't make him guest host to mess with me. They do everything to mess with me. What do you call renting out our studio in the morning to Maury Povich, for Christ's sake? Lori, I need some coffee. Great show. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, w w when, are w when are we supposed to rehearse? You know, am I supposed to move my camera around a bunch of uh, bald women with eating disorders? We won't let that happen, Dave. We'll do something about it. Gosh, Morty, I know. Uh, we could uh, boycott the show. They'll probably use that as an excuse to fire me. Oh, come on, Dave. I fucked up number six. No, you talking. didn't. No, I fucked it up. It was the only decent joke in the whole fucking show. And I it was it. funny. Yeah, it, it, was fun. it was funny. It was funny. I wasn't. Let me see the tape. No, why don't you just take a breather? Give me the fucking tape. Fucking bastard. It's one lousy table, $10,000. That's chump change. Uh, that's extortion, Helen. What? That's not extortion. It's charity, for God's sake. Oh, it's for on. pediatric AIDS. You uh, selfish prick. Oh, you flatter me. Oh, sweetie. Put me down for two. What? Two tables. You are such Helen, a you mensch. Still love me? Yes, I still love you. <laughs> See, that didn't hurt very bad. When are we going to have dinner, honey? I, I, I got to go. I got to go. Jay's here. Jeez. Bye. Hey. How you doing? Here's your tickets. Oh, where am I going this time? Come, I'll walk you to the car. Okay. That's uh, mine. You know my future. I know your future. Follow me. You're playing Joe Laughs in Green Bay Friday. The NBC affiliate is WLUK. Good luck, huh? Mm. I'm getting you in just in time to do the new news. Oh, yeah, that's good. I I'm sure there's a lot of people watching the new news in Green Bay. Don't give me shit. Those local stations are going to get you the Tonight Show. All right. Here, I want to show you something. Look at this. Oh, please, not another goddamn motorcycle. I don't have time. Helen, Helen, hold on. Take a second look at this motorcycle. To JL, crank it on up and ride over to CBS forever. It's a rare bike. Do you have any idea what this cost them? No, I don't know what it cost, but I know what it means. Hi. Hello. Table for two? Please. Uh -huh. Are you what? sure this is the place for a good corned beef sandwich? Yeah. I want it discreet. I don't think anybody from NBC will be dropped. Oh, Jesus. What? Arnie Kleiner from Paramount just walked in with some other guy. Will they know Helen? Oh, here she comes. You said we'd have privacy here. I just saw Arnie Kleiner in the corner down on a Thai beer. Oh, my God, Howard Stringer. Right. A pleasure to meet you, Helen. <sighs> Rod said we would just uh, talk a little business over lunch. This looks like a little more than lunch. Oh, of course it is. You wouldn't want to waste your value time. All right. Now, we think the world of Jay. We've noticed what he's been doing filling in for Carson, and we think he's ready to be a star right now. And we have something no one else can offer him. 11.30, wide open. Holy shit. A deal memo already? <laughs> You guys are serious. Here, you you take this. I don't, I don't want to hold on to this. Well, you can give Jay the details without the paper if you prefer. The show opens in September. He'll get six million to start. How does that sound? Six million. Yeah, all right. I'm impressed. But uh, we may be rushing this a little bit. I mean, Jay's a loyal puppy. He's got a thing for The Tonight Show, like every other comic in America. Oh, of course. But isn't he still third in that line? behind Carson and Letterman? No, I wouldn't say that. But I would say that we have some reason to feel a little uh, impatient with where we are. And um, I'll admit it to you, Howard. I love this offer. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments of Mr. Kleiner.
This feels like a late night DMZ. Does that make me Nixon? <laughs> I guess I'm kissing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With you negotiating, that war would have gone nuclear. At least in this war, we control all the weapons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we hope. Hi, Brad. Hey, Mort, how you doing? Mort, see you. Enjoy the evening. Hey, Warren. Got Howard Stringer humping Leno's leg. Right. You gonna tell the GE guys if we lose him? My dog ate my late night host? I may. <laughs> <laughs> what Helen needs is stroking. Jay. Oh. I hear Howard Stringer wants to take you to Bermuda for a romantic weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. Jay, honey, it's time to go get your makeup on. Your spot starts in 30 minutes. I get it, manager, network, need to be alone. I can take a hint. Hi, right, uh, Brandon. Like your wallet. <laughs> hey, David. Oh, hey. hey. Hey, Jay. How you doing? How you doing? Hey. Good. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's going on? Listen, how's NBC treating you? Oh, good. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, who knows? Okay, I guess, you know. Yeah. Oh, hey, I saw that show the other day on Sandra Bernhardt. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. It was great. Come on. It was great. Oh, it's great. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It was so funny. Yeah. It was funny. I know Morty's done. I want to talk to Morty. Hey, um, are you, are you guys going to stay around? Uh, no. We, go we, we, we got to take the red eye back. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so. I think the red eye. Listen, uh, you know, Jay, what? We'll uh, have Morty call you and uh, we'll book you on the show sure. when you're not filling in for Johnny. Yeah, whatever. You know, I'm good. You know, you know me. I'm always ready, ready for whatever, as long as it's okay with Helen. Ah, right, of course. Well, uh, you know, we'll have Morty call Helen and do it that way. All right, All right. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Dave. All okay. right. Okay. Oh, listen, Jay, call Morty. Yeah. yeah All right. Just tell him to call Helen. All right. All right. Yeah. Morty. Good to see you. I gotta tell you, I got a hell of an offer from CBS. I don't know. I mean, Jay wants to stay and take over when Carson steps down, but Brandon, I need a commitment. Helen, you're as subtle as a knee to the groin. I didn't hear the words Tonight Show in there anywhere. <laughs> what are you saying? You want us to bounce Johnny now? You want to deprive him of reaching his 30th anniversary? I'm just looking to protect my guy. Look at her working Brandon. Is she shameless or what? <laughs> David. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't say hello to Brandon. Oh, for God's sake. Now is your chance to let somebody know that you want the Tonight Show. Let's wave them over. Wave? Yeah, Jesus, you don't wave heads of networks. You wave uh, waiters and uh, hookers and... Uh, oh, Brandon! Good Lord. How could a television show be worth this much embarrassment? Hey, David. Hey, uh, Brandon, how you doing? David, I think I heard them call your category, but don't worry, Littlefield ran in to accept for you. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny sends Peter. his regards. Ah, oh, thank you, Peter. Too bad he couldn't come. Then I could have been photographed with all our late-night stars before they all start filing for free agency. <laughs> <laughs> David, I, uh, I know you want the job as much as Jim. Listen, Brandon. I am not uh, campaigning for I'm anything. Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying you are. I just want you to know that we haven't forgotten. Well, that's uh, that's good to hear, Brandon. Thanks. Sure. I, I was in uh, I was in New York in uh, July, and uh, I stopped by to see you. Laurie said you were in rehearsal or. Uh, yeah. No, actually, I was uh, locked in my office sobbing. So uh, sorry about that. I'll try not to be a uh, antisocial jerk next time. So. And Brandon, listen, I I really do appreciate it. Sure, Dave. Right. Good luck. Uh -huh. Brandon. See you. Oh. Oh, I feel like a daddy who's just gotten all his children to bed. Brandon, you shit. We have to talk. Helen, I'm running through a contract negotiation with the guys from Cheers, hey, Helen. Listen, I th listen, I've had it with this runaround. You don't get by with verbal assurances anymore. Uh, See, I had a verbal commitment from Brandon a year ago. Now he's gone to Paramount. Uh, you I'm not so fond of, John. No offense. You think you can pull the same manipulative shit with me you try and everybody else in this town, but Helen. you fuck with me, and I'll fuck you back good. See, I don't have a contract with you. I can Helen. move Jay to CBS within a month. That this... would leave you with Carson and his retirement uh, home Helen. audience. So let's cut the this shit, shall we? This has just been a busy period. Come on, these things take time. You're Come not on. listening, asshole. I don't want to hear about time. I want a piece of paper. I don't know when Carson's going to get the fucking message and quit. I want Jay signed. Helen, I hear you. Believe me. Let me see what I can do, huh? Give me one week. A week, seven days, John. Trust me, I can count. Right.
Hey, Marty. Have you seen this? Jesus Christ. What the hell is this? From what I can tell, there's absolutely no source for it. Ooh. My God, well, what, what, what's this mean now, Marty? What does it mean? It means nothing. It means Helen got on the phone. I mean, this has to be Helen. Yeah, but uh, would uh, NBC treat Johnny this way? I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, I cannot believe this would have happened if Brandon hadn't gone to Paramount. I mean, he had some control. Helen wouldn't dare pull this no, shit no, no, when no, Brandon no, no. was there. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is all uh, NBC. It's their way of uh, dealing Jay. No, 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 no. Don't assume these assholes have a plan. It's a New York Post, for God's sake. What's that mean? It's not NBC style. All right. Let's see how these guys uh, weasel out of this one. We have to control the rumors. We have to control the rumors? You have to control the rumors. So how do we word the release? Well, maybe we should just talk about the network's huge debt to Johnny. No words like, and we hope the king will reign for many years to come? No. OK. Helen's work, right? What do you think? Oh, this probably came from the Carson people. I mean, they know they're in trouble. They're trying to screw you by leaking the story. They want to make you look so fucking eager you'll do anything to get the job. Well, I guess that makes sense. You know, I'm just... just worried about Johnny. What are you worried about him for? He doesn't worry about you. I don't know. I mean, that's the problem. I don't think he really likes me. There you go with that like shit again. Well, what the hell difference does it make whether Carson likes you or not? I mean, he's not picking his successor. NBC is. Well, you don't think they'll give him a vote? No, I don't. Would you leave the campaigning to me? Go, do your fucking jokes. I just, you know, I want to be able to swear to Johnny that this didn't compromise. So go ahead and swear. Hello. Johnny. Hey, it's it's Jay. Jay. Yeah, how you doing? I look, I just wanted to uh just wanted to talk to you about this rotten article in the post. You know, I just wanted to tell you, you know, make it clear to you that it it, it didn't come from us. Actually, uh, you've been the uh, GE employee of the uh, week, haven't you there, Paul? Oh, uh, gee, Dave, I guess I, I missed out on that one. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's quite an honor, Paul. And, uh, you know, uh, kids, why don't we find out who, who the uh, GE employee of the week is uh, this week. Uh, right here uh, on our show, uh, we can reveal the name of the GE employee of the week. Anton, can we have a... Uh... Here we go. Uh, let's see who it is this week, huh, Paul? Warren Littlefield and uh, John Agolia. Well, this is the reason I went into television. So my family could see me being insulted in front of four million people. He's got the microphone, and we're helpless. Forget about it. I've been looking through these ratings charts you sent me. So, so you know how well Jay is doing? Yeah. Primetime revenues are next to nothing. I'm thinking about all the money we've got riding on late night. The last thing we need is a problem there. Well, we've already got one. Helen Kushnick. The woman's forcing the issue. Now, so far, we've been able to keep her in line with verbal assurances. Leno's in line for The Tonight Show. Plus, we've committed serious money, if Leno doesn't get the show. Two, three million dollars. Yeah, but Helen will forfeit the money and go to CBS. And that could be a disaster for us. We've still got Carson and Letterman. A lot of people believe that Leno is the hottest talent in television. It would be a major mistake to lose Jay now, especially since Johnny doesn't have that long to go. John has never said one word to me about critic. Well, it may get to the point where we can't wait any longer. You want to get rid of Johnny Carson? His ratings are softening. Arsenio's got the younger viewers. That's where the money is. <sighs> got to make sure the future is secure. You know, if we give Jay a firm deal now, give him a contract that guarantees him the show whenever Johnny leaves, I think he and Helen would go for it. Yeah, but where does that leave us with Letterman? He can't go anywhere. We've got him for two more years. And Letterman's never once asked us to guarantee him the show if Johnny quits. Dave is still our 1230 guy. We'll make sure he stays there. All we need to do now is get Jay signed. Keep him off CBS. And this should stay between us Helen and Jay. Carson doesn't have to know. Letterman doesn't have to know. It never makes the papers. That is essential. I don't want anybody writing that NBC is pushing Johnny Carson out the door. I want this handled very carefully.
John and I are friends. But we've got to have late night locked up. And if that means a deal for Leno, let's do it. Jay is the host the first week night after Carson's last show. Helen is the executive producer. NBC Productions owns the show. Now, of course, no word of this leaves this room. No. No. Oh. Helen gets this fact check. Well, I think you could say this is the impossible dream coming true for two people, huh? Yeah, I, I think, Helen, they got us where they want us. Well, you see, I would have said it the other way around. <laughs> Let's give a big hand to the stars of our 1992 fall lineup. <laughs> well, you've, uh, you've seen the... Uh, the new programs for our fall season, and, and I, I hope our affiliates and our friends in the advertising community agree we've put new life into prime time. And now the, the last surprise of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the king of late night television soon to begin his 30th year at NBC. Here's Johnny. <laughs> of you. Gee, gee, what a fast-paced afternoon. <laughs> you, you folks must be just short of a coma. <laughs> you know, I always get a little awestruck to think of the great men who have graced the stage. Yasha Heifetz, Vladimir Horowitz, and today, Warren Littlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of knocks the hell out of Darwin's theory, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, Jay Leno, who is now the guest host on our show, is driving me nuts backstage. How are you feeling? Your thyroid okay? You know, I like Jay, and he is very concerned about my health. In fact, he suggested I take a run through Central Park about midnight tonight. <laughs> anyway, I know it's been a long afternoon. I just want to say, this is the last year that I'm doing The Tonight Show. Why did he just say, oh, this big the last year? I don't, I don't know. Run. But my last show is going to be one year from now, May the 22nd, 1992. I just want to, I want to thank you. I am very grateful. And I bid you goodbye. Why didn't you this is real. I just said it. The world heard me. It's real. Great time, Bob. <laughs> Terrific. Did you know about this, John? Uh, Mr. Littlefield, can I just ask questions, I'd like please? to thank, thank you, um, Johnny, and thank you for coming. Uh, and the bathrooms are down the hall and to the right. Uh, what are you going to do with 11.30? Warren. What the hell is going well, on here? I had here? no goddamn idea what was We going have on. no release know. prepared, nothing. Well, well Betty, why don't you? I, the press is going to fry us like you beacon know, strips, is what I'm going to say. Right the now. advertisers in the world with our asses. Well, you know, I didn't know anything. He didn't say a word. No, sir, are we so who's it going to be? Who gets to the Tonight yeah. Show? I'm not going to answer any questions right now. It's been on that of Come on, Betty, who gets to the job? Come on, Betty. Stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Poppy. Mr. Leno. Yeah. There's a phone call for you, sir. I'd like to show you to the courtesy phone. Oh, all right. Uh, excuse me. Aren't you the Doritos guy? Johnny announced he was quitting today. What? What are you talking about? I, I was just with him. He went on last long after you'd gone. He just dumped it on him. He said he was doing the show one more year and then out. I mean, did they, did they make any kind of announcement about us? 
<laughs> Nothing. I mean, they were too busy trying to pull up their pants, but, you know, it'll come. The deal is set. We got it, Jay. One more year. His last show is May 22nd. Our first is May 25th, Memorial Day. God, I'm having a hard time getting my breath. I'm hearing what my mother always said. Be careful what you wish for. You might get it. I know what you mean. So what? So, um, sorry, I mean, it's still a secret, right? We can't, you know, say anything about it. We waited this long. What difference does another day or two make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, you know, they want to... Probably want to tell Dave first, you know. You're such a nice guy, Jay Leno. Worrying about your old friend Dave? You want to know the real difference between you and Letterman? You had me. Enough. Now go do your show in Tahoe. Have a good time. Uh, is Johnny here? Yes, he's here and he's ready. Oh, yeah? You're not gonna believe this. What? Johnny announced his retirement at the affiliates meeting in Carnegie Hall. What, 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 what do you mean he announced his... Well, when? when? When's he gonna retire? A year from now. One more year on the air, that's what he said. Holy oh, shit. And did NBC uh, make no, an... No, no. No announcement from NBC. Okay, 20 seconds. <laughs> Can you fucking believe this? Isn't this amazing? <laughs> I happen to be in the neighborhood, <laughs> so I, I brought you a little something. Did you, Dad? What's it? You're the winner of the million dollar sweepstakes. <laughs> Whoa, Marty, Johnny asked me to stay on until the show is done, and I told him I would. After that, I'm all yours. That's great, because we both won. No, I, uh, I just happen to be in town doing something for the affiliates. That's right, that's right. You quit. Johnny, you quit, uh, you quit your job. That's the business you came to. Jesus Christ, this guy is so good. I cannot fucking believe we haven't heard from a goalie or radar little field. None of them. Maybe they lost the number. So how are we gonna handle unpleasant days? Well, it's real simple. First we slap him, and then we kiss up. Yeah, well, there's only so much kissing up I'm capable of. I've got a signed contract with this guy's name on it. Fuck him and his bruised ego. My ass is bruised from sitting on a goddamn plane. Uh, you, so you want uh, Morty to sit behind the desk? All right, fine, I can do that. Okay. Uh, no, no, no I, I, is this gonna work, Peter? Hello. Hello, gentlemen. Dave will be with you in just a few more minutes. Oh, great, thanks. Can I get you some coffee while mm -hmm. you wait? Please, black. Yeah, okay. I'd love some, thanks. Have a seat. They look like such worms, I tell you. It's Littlefield. Yeah, I'll go with us with them. Oh, great, thank you. You're welcome. Hmm? The coffee is freezing. Yeah, 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 I can do this. Don't worry. All right, thanks, Peter. Morty, sit behind my desk. You sit, you sit at the desk. Okay. I'm gonna sit right here. And uh, I'm gonna put them over here. All right. <clears throat> Uh, hiya, Warren. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Hi, Morty. And uh, you are? Come on, Dave. John Agolia. Ah, oh, yeah, John. Good to see you. How you doing? Thanks for coming. Uh, why don't you have a seat over here? All right. Dave, you know why we're here. Now, the network has been analyzing the late-night situation, and uh, for the last several years, we've watched Jay grow into the role of host. Now, ob obviously, we have every reason to be proud of what you've accomplished, but a choice had to be made. And so tomorrow, NBC will announce that Jay Leno has been named the next host of The Tonight Show. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Jay will do a fine job. Uh, but I must tell you that uh, we have done this show for 10 years. And uh, we know how to do this show. Now, the best thing would have been for all of us here to have uh, gone on and have done the Tonight Show. 
That's what we always wanted to do. And it's a real disappointment that we're not. But if it is your final decision, uh, then you can contact my lawyer. Gentlemen, this is completely unacceptable. I want you to release me from my contract. Well, huh, what is this? I mean, <laughs> I mean, where does this leave us, Morty? I mean, uh, how, how can we make him happy? You want to keep him happy? Do as he asks. He wants The Tonight Show. Well, short of that. We have a plan for enhancing Dave's role on Late Night. We want to make it a seamless two-hour block no. right after Jay takes no, over no, no, the no, show. No, 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 John, you don't understand. Dave wants The Tonight Show, period. Well, I, I'm afraid that just isn't possible. Why isn't that possible? Morty. You already have a deal with Leno? You do, don't you? Let's just say a decision has been made. A decision has been made. It's over, all right? <laughs> so if you want to help us out, Morty, you tell me how NBC can make Dave enthused about doing the 1230 show. <laughs> Morty. We'll be back. Hold my calls, Pam. OK, Mr. Martin. Oh, Morty. Ah. Uh... Not bad, huh? I mean, all right. No, I, not no, bad. no, 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 I sucked. No, Fine. you didn't but, suck, Dave. You didn't suck. No, 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 there's something there. I mean, I've known those guys for Dave. 10 years. I've known them Dave. for Dave. Warren Littlefield has never seen me like that. I've got a little red David, beard in David. there. They thought it was George Papard or something. It didn't work. Well, we don't know that. Yes, we do. No, yes, we do know. They just told me in their own charming, fucking inimitable way. They're going with Jay. As far as NBC is concerned, you're 1230. And that's it. That's it. David, I know you're depressed, but you have to keep fighting. Fighting for what? I'm fucked. I'm finished. My time is up. It's the end of the road for a TV boy. David, don't get into that. Do you want The Tonight Show? Uh, why don't you uh, ask me if I want to play uh, center field for the Yankees? Of course I want the Tonight Show. It's my... <sighs> Since I was 10 years old, it's the only dream of my whole life. All right. What are you going to do about it? can't just want it. You have to do something. I have done a uh, television program on their network for the last 10 years. What do you want me to do about it? I put a, a, a penalty uh, clause in my contract if they don't give me the Tonight Show. How much? A million dollars. Oh, David, that's tip money to those guys. I, all right, I'm a pinhead, Pete. I didn't know what I was doing. Come on. I, now what do I do? I just want that show. I mean, I'm only really uh, happy that one hour a day when I'm doing my show. David, you will have a show. You're a television star. People will want to hire you. Yeah, who? CBS? CBS just fired Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. Their gums are still bleeding. They don't want to hear the words late night ever again. ABC? ABC's got Ted Koppel on at 11.30. He's the gold standard. I'm nickel plating. So what does that lead? Syndication? Ho oh, ho, what a feeling. Can you imagine being sold by a syndicator? Uh, we got uh, Letterman or uh, Studs. You can either have uh, Studs or uh, Letterman. I'm fucked, Pete. Listen, David. Don't accept what NBC is doing to you. You simply can't. You must not follow Jay Leno, because you'll hate yourself for the rest of your life. It'll make you crazy. Yeah, but I've already lost the job to him. What else am I going to do? Uh, how about getting an agent? Oh, yeah. Now, I don't, don't reject the idea on. out of hand. I know how you feel about agents. But we need somebody with some power in the business. Yeah, I know, but Jesus, an agent? I mean, an agent's what you pull off the bottom of your shoe after a baseball game. I mean, they're just going to book me in uh, Tahoe with Tony Orlando and Dawn. Listen, David. I have an idea. David. Uh, hey. Peter. Oh. Mike Ovitz. Hello. Please come in. It's wonderful to have you here. Well, thank, thank you. you. Please. <laughs> David, I don't know if you remember this, but years ago when you were with William Morris and I was still an agent there, yeah. we actually met very briefly. Uh, geez, I, I can't believe you remembered that. <laughs> what I remember is 
You were the funniest guy in the room. <laughs> in fact, I, uh, I don't think we got much accomplished that day. <laughs> Michael, uh, maybe we should tell you a little bit about David's circumstances. Peter, I know Dave's circumstances. And so I know why you're here. Dave is a star of such compelling stature that, frankly, it makes me personally angry he finds himself disabused. We pride ourselves here at CAA in developing a career plan for our clients that protects them as much as it enriches them. David has set such an incredibly high professional standard, and yet he is going disturbingly unrewarded. That just doesn't make sense. It's simply bad business practice. Obviously, we have an intense interest in establishing a business relationship with you, Dave, and with you, Peter. Frankly, we have worked out a career plan for David, and it includes securing everything for Dave that he wants. Everything. Of course, that means an 1130 television show. Dave will be offered an 1130 show, and he will be offered it by every network. The geometry of the deal will be far larger. The studios will be in, the syndicators, the full range of the entertainment industry. We shall frame a deal that will make you one of the giants. And if you give us the privilege of working with you, CAA will take care of everything your talents deserve and your spirit desires. Water? Huh? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, I was like having it. I was like uh, having a meeting with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, with the, godfather. the, the, the godfather. Oh, my God. Oops. Hello? Hi, Warren. Good morning. Teresa told me I'd find you in the car. Good morning, Ellen. How are things? Well, I've had it with the Carson people, uh, trying to get anything out of them. They wouldn't put Jay on the show. They wouldn't pass the baton. Pass the what, Helen? Pass the baton. I had this great idea. I thought Johnny should say goodbye Friday, leave his desk, take his handheld mic, walk over to our studio, and hand it over to Jay right on the air, pass the baton. And you suggested this t to whom? Peter LaSalle. He was like, I peed on his shoe. Well, you know, I think they might want to finish up on their own terms, Helen. I, you know, you, you'll have plenty of time for your own ideas. We sure will, starting Monday. Uh -huh. Now, I want to talk about the ad again. Now, you know, we've been over this, Helen, and, and, and we can't buy an ad for Jay in Friday's paper because we've already bought a full-page ad there to say goodbye to Johnny. Well, why can't NBC buy a full-page ad to welcome Jay to face Johnny's ad? Because, as I told you before, the uh, paper is doing its own full page of stories, saluting Johnny on the page opposite the ad, and uh, and we're not going to crowd that with the welcome uh, J ad. That's it. End of story, Helen. No, it's not the end of story, Warren. I'm telling you now that ad's going in on Friday. If NBC won't buy the fucking thing, then I'll pay for it myself, but that ad is going in. No, it isn't going in, Helen, and it's not going to be your money, and you're not doing it because I will not allow it. We've, we've, we've thought about it, and we've listened, and we've made a decision, and that decision is final. Boy, I knew I could expect shit like this from a dickless wonder like you. Well, fuck you, Helen. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. You know, when you You're were wrong. We're not going to do this. Water, I will not boy, allow you it. Jay's you know contract, you didn't you? Well, I'm fucking mine. I have done but I got the everything fucking show in my power anyway. to see that this man yeah, is embraced by this network. You're only natural and talent, Warren. Fucking up. And enough. It's over. Done. <laughs> This is it, huh? I am one of the lucky people in the world because I got to do something I've always wanted to do, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I can only tell you, it's been an honor to come into your homes and let me entertain you. And I hope when I do find something that I want to do, you will still Invite me into your home, as you always have. I bid you a very heartfelt goodbye.
Uh, is, is this where you want me to stand? I mean, I always stand right here, right? Where the fuck is Billy Crystal? Why hasn't he arrived yet? Stand up straight, for Christ's sake. You're the host of The Tonight Show. <laughs> so, Jay, uh, how's it going? Oh, you know me. Yeah, Mr. Stress. Yeah. You look like you're ready to take a nap. Well, maybe I will. I just I, I want to get it over with, you know? Oh, you know what I want to talk to you about? I think we should lose a second Perot joke. Yeah, listen, Jay, don't you think it'd be appropriate to uh, say something nice about Johnny early in the show, you know? It wasn't my decision. Yeah, but still, I mean... Bob Wright? Him I guess I have to talk to. Go ahead. Hi, Bob. So nice of you to check in today. Thanks, Helen. I just called to wish Jay well tonight. I'm sure he's gonna have a great show. Oh, thanks. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that happens. I'm sure you are. Listen, Helen, I did have one other thought. What's Jay gonna do to thank Johnny? We're not gonna do anything. I'd like to hear why. You wanna know why? Okay, uh, the new show is gonna be entirely different from the old show. We don't wanna look like we're beholden to Johnny's old audience. Get that out of here. And every comic knows you only salute the last guy to get more applause for yourself. I mean, that's kiss-up stuff. Jay doesn't do kiss-up. I think it's a terrible mistake, Helen. I, 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 it boils down to simple politeness. Now, I would really like for you to go down there and tell Jay to say something like, I wouldn't be here but for Johnny. No, I'm not going to go to Jay one hour before a live broadcast and tell him to insert some tribute to Johnny Carson. Absolutely not. But I appreciate your good wishes, and I'll tell Jay you called. Studios in Burbank. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Featuring Branford Marsalis and the Tonight Show Band. Tonight, Jay welcomes comedian Billy Crystal. And musical guest, Garth Brooks. And now, I got official notice from CAA. All future business activity for David Letterman will be handled through Michael Orbitz's office. What, they hired Orbitz? Was he trying to get sprung? Yeah, he'd have to hire God for that. Uh, well, well, let's think about this. Dave didn't hire Mike Orbitz to get a five-year deal out of us to stay at 12.30. That's not a big enough move for him. Now, this only works if he gets 11.30 for Dave. You're not listening, Warren. Dave can bring Machiavelli back from the dead. It still does not do him any good. I made this deal. Mm -hmm. We've got full protection. What is he going to do? Ovitz, huh? Put him on television in Venezuela. Come on. <laughs> this Letterman contract has clauses in it a prisoner wouldn't have. How the hell did we get him out of it? Well, Lee, give me all the bad news. Whatever deal we make, they have a right to match, and they can take a full year to match, which means they could keep them off the air if they want. <laughs> that sounds like something you'd have in the deal for a sports announcer from some local radio station. Gets worse. NBC has first negotiating position. We can't even talk a deal with anyone but them for 18 months. No offers. Nothing. OK, so we don't negotiate. We can still talk to people, right? Sure, we can talk. What then? Then we set up pitches. We can't pitch Letterman around, Mike. NBC would challenge No, them. no, no. We don't pitch David Letterman to anybody. They pitch themselves to us. We reverse the process. And it's legal, too. Yes. We can't stop somebody from talking to us. Pardon me. <sighs> Rod. Howard. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, I made the plane in 14 seconds. Glad you made it. We need you here. All the heavyweights are coming in. I heard Eisner is going to be pitching Disney himself. Really? Well, I wish they had made it clear earlier that this was a true pitch. Morton called me yesterday and told me I'd see me here. That's the first time I knew I had to come. All I had in the Hamptons was this old suit. And then I get on the plane, I realize I have no bloody cufflinks, paper clips. <laughs> I'm just afraid Letterman will see it and conclude that Larry Tish is an even bigger tightwad than GE, which isn't far wrong. 
Hi, Rod. Uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry. We're under a bit of a time constraint, so I just wanted to say that we're here because we want to get acquainted with how you do business and to see how Dave might fit in with your plans. I would like to reiterate that this is not a negotiation. It is, for want of a better word, a process. So, Harold, would you like to speak first for CBS? Sure. David, I know that you have a, an appreciation for the history and tradition of broadcasting. Much of that tradition has been written by CBS. Even in England, we knew Jack Benny and Lucy and Gleason. Now, does David Letterman fit that tradition? Like a glove. The point is, the CBS of present can give you what you want, David. Affiliate strength strong management, excellent promotion, and yes, we have space available at 11.30 every weeknight. And we're a network. We're what you want, Dave. We're a home. Michael, thank you so much for coming. You have a young audience. We're the young network. We're also the only ones capable of offering you a start time of 11 p.m. That'll give you the jump on Mr. Leno. Thank you. Hi, Robert. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, appreciate it. ABC has always been the network for the young viewers. We know how to reach that audience and deliver it to you. I'm not going to say here today what we're going to do about Nightwine, but... Hi, hey. Thank you Thank for coming. You I appreciate it. it. We'll build the entire syndication operation at Columbia around David Letterman and Late Night. We expect we could launch nationally with a lineup of stations as strong as any networks. Ah, uh, Joe, well, that sounds great, Bob. Uh, Alan. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Michael, Michael how are you? Oh, appreciate it. All. Thank you, Morty. At Paramount, we proved with Arsenio we already know how to make late night work in syndication. I think it's a perfect match. Arsenio, followed by Letterman. I follow the example of their nominee, don't inhale. <sighs> Who's done this old fool? On and on and on and on. getting close to 11. Local news will start late. Get Warren on the phone. Great, we reschedule our fucking lives, do a live show so Jay can follow up their ghastly convention coverage with some new jokes, then they won't let us on the goddamn air. Motherfuckers in news fucking us again. Warren, they're letting this go on. He's not gonna finish by 11. I swear to you, I'm sending my audience home if you don't get this over on time. No, I'm not losing it. You said you had this under control. Look, a pause right there. They could have cut him off. Get me Gardner in Houston. God damn it. It's 11 p.m. in the East right now. Mr. Gardner, phone for you. Helen Kushnick on the line. Yeah, Gardner here. You promised me you'd be off by 11, you shithead. I'm going live tonight so we can get some payoff from your horseshit convention coverage. I'm accommodating you by giving Brokaw airtime with Jay. Now you get this gas bag Reagan off the air now, or I'm not using Brokaw tonight. I don't give a shit if you use Brokaw tonight or any other night, lady, and let's get something straight. I am the president of NBC News. You don't have anything to do with what I do. I'm taking you off the air this time, you pompous ass. There's only one person who can take me off the air, Bob Wright. I'll give you his number. Call him. I don't need to call Bob fucking Wright. I'll send my audience home, and then you can call him and explain why The Tonight Show wasn't on the fucking air, because the news asshole couldn't get a horseshit speech off on time. Send him home. Get him the fuck out of here. Uh, Helen, is this a good idea? I mean, can, can you do this? Hey, who the fuck made you the executive producer? You do the fucking jokes. I run the fucking show. I made the decision. They fucked us. So now they don't get a show. Get these fucking people out of here now. There is no show for them to see. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have what you might call technical difficulty right now. It's a heck of a thing. I, have you been watching the convention coverage? Could have been a doctor. Yeah, well, it's not too late, right? Oh, Rick, uh, you know, we're running a little late, but I think we're going to be all right. The show should start, I think, around 11. Oh, that's great, Warren, but I wanted to uh, do me a favor. Would yes. you hold that thought? Well, I was about to call. What, 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 you know, what the hell? Well, uh, the ship has sailed. There's, there's nobody here. Jesus Christ, she... What, she sent the audience home? We don't have a Tonight Show? You know, I've already sold this thing to advertisers. Christ! She killed the schedule of the show. My level of tolerance with Helen Kushnick is completely used up. So is ours. That woman canceled a Tonight Show with no authorization whatsoever. We had less than half an hour to get that repeat on, or we would have gone dark. She is completely out of control. That's become apparent to everybody now, Bob. Well, the problem is, what do we do about it? If we make a move on Helen now, Jay could be injured. I don't know, maybe irreparably. The guy seems to be totally dependent on it. That's his problem, not ours. It's ours if Jay walks off the show. I mean, the ratings have been solid. I hate to tamper with the show. Maybe, maybe we should just limp along for a while. Yeah, and wait for her to self-destruct. She will soon, the way she's going. Then it won't be an issue with Jay, and we won't have to pay her off. I think it's more apparent than ever before that we should keep our options open with Letterman. If you two want to limp along with this situation for now, that's your call. But at some point, and it's getting to be soon, it's going to be my call. I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for this wonderful tribute. It has been one of the most memorable nights of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rupert. Uh, thank you, everyone. Your generosity has been greatly appreciated. Excuse me. Good night. How are you? Maybe it's time for us to talk, Bob. You heard about Kushnick, huh? Well, I'm not going to get in the middle of whatever it is you need to do about Kushnick, but uh, if you think it's time to get serious about doing something with Dave, I have a few suggestions. I'd like to hear them. Well, I think it's important. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Good to see you. I think it's important for NBC, if you're really serious about keeping Dave, to start creating some goodwill. And there's enough animosity in this relationship to start a small war. And to my mind, it's all been stupid and unwarranted. Thank you. I'm all for goodwill. What do you have in mind? Well, we are prevented from pursuing office for David because we are required by NBC to negotiate with them first. But that clause only serves to ensure that David is not going to listen to any initial offers that you might make, generous as they may be, because naturally he's going to want to test the waters elsewhere. So we can all play this game, or we can just loosen up the chains a little bit. How? You can allow us to solicit other offers openly. After all, you still retain the matching rights. Seems like we're conceding an awful lot for the sake of goodwill. Maybe, maybe you could offer something in return. Our sales department tells me that we've sold the Letterman show till the end of June. But, as you know, David's contract is up April 2nd. So, <clears throat> if we don't resign him, we'll have to return that money. Unless... <laughs> Unless we give you a three-month extension. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the deal. We give you three months, and you free us up to negotiate. Do you... Do you think David would see that as a gesture of goodwill? I believe I can assure you that he would.
<laughs> Hello, Howard. Mike. Listen, we're ready to talk seriously now. Robert Morton on three. Morty, how are things in New York? New York is great. It's great to talk to you, too. I'm sure you're quite busy with the show. Yeah, I'm damn busy, so what's up? Well, uh, you've probably been too busy to realize you've double booked one of our guests. Apparently, you've got Roger Daltrey in the same week we've got him. Now, I'm sure this is just an oversight by your staff, but I thought I should call and... Just let you, uh, you know, know the way we work things. You see, we sort of always had this gentleman's agreement with Johnny. Hey, Marty, hadn't you noticed I'm no gentleman? Well, Helen, it's just that the record company is telling us you're trying to force Daltrey into canceling his appearance with us. I mean, he's our guest, Helen. He is? Well, let me help you out here, Morty. I mean, you have no power with NBC to back you up on guests. You really think NBC's gonna back your show over mine? I mean, your guy was the loser, remember? That's a cheap shot, Helen. <laughs> yeah, well, you can expect more where that came from. I mean, you have no fucking clue what's going on at the network. You're helpless. You really ought to have me do your next contract for you. I mean, you're making bupkis next to me. You know, I thought we were friends. I really did, but you know, let me tell you something. I will fight you on adultery, and I'll fight you on every guest you try to steal. Ooh, good luck, Mighty Mouse. On one. Helen. Kenny, I'll get right to the point. We see Travis's billboards all over town. We want to book him. Gee, that's great, Helen. I mean, that's really nice. So when do you want to... I mean, we uh... want him this week, when he's here for the concert. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. He's on Arsenio on Wednesday. Yeah, I know. My bookers told me. So cancel it. I mean, Arsenio's over with. He's in the toilet. His advertisers are deserting him. By the end of the year, there won't even be an Arsenio. Well, he's on the air now, and we're committed there. I guess you're not hearing me. Let me spell it out for you. If you want Travis on this show ever again, you better break that date with Arsenio. Helen, I think you need to know something about me. I mean, I don't respond well to threats. Now, look, maybe I can offer you something else. I mean, we've got a movie of the week coming up we need to promote <sighs> with Kenny Rogers, Travis, and Naomi Judd. What if I could get them all on the same show? Excuse me, this ain't Merv Griffin. We don't do fucking theme shows, you dumb shit kicking hick. Let me break the news to you. Not only is Travis Tritt not going to do the Tonight Show ever again, but you and I are going to be in this town a long time. We're going to see each other, and we're never going to talk again. I mean, it's your fucking loss, and the record companies. Ken? The booking office from Leno just called. Trisha Yearwood's appearance has been canceled. Trisha Yearwood has been booked on Leno for months. I mean, how can Helen get away with this crap? Well, I'm not gonna take it. Get me Robert Hilburn at the LA Times. Brace yourself, Warren. Ken Cragen's gone public about Helen. Holy hell is breaking loose. This is it? Oh, even Jay can see she's totally out of control. <laughs> Independent verification. Oh, oh. Ah. Helen has one option. She accepts this redefinition of duties or she's off the show. Can't book guests. I don't do that already. We have bookers for that. Can't cancel guests. I've never canceled a guest, no matter what the fucking LA Times says. Cannot talk to the media. Well, that's a relief. Who needs that? This is no redefinition of my duties. It's what I've been doing all along. And if you sign this, we'll hold your feet to the flame on every issue. You know, when, when they put Johnson Nuno out of the White House, uh, everything fell apart. You guys just want me to prove I can be a good little girl, huh? Would any of this be pulled with a male executive producer? Bullshit. Well, okay, I can be a good little girl. And who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Try to control yourself, Ellen. Stop fucking with me, Warren. I know what you're up to. You've made a mess of prime time. You know you can't measure up to the job Brandon did, so this is all you can do to try to save your own ass is to come after me. Hey, Warren, you know they're talking to Don Olmeyer for your job and Carrie McCluggage? So go fuck yourself, Warren. I mean, you've had a lot of practice at that, right? Helen. She'll never make it as a diplomat. If you love her, get her out of here. She needs help, Jay. We all need help, Warren. We all, I mean, we, you know, the numbers are still good. Isn't that what's important? It doesn't matter. You're approaching disaster. Helen has pushed too far. The whole town is rising up against her. Well, you know, it's not as easy as you think, you know. I mean, Helen made all this happen for me. <laughs> Everything. You know what I was doing before I, I met Helen? You know what I was doing? I was working at strip clubs, you know? I wasn't going to be on any television show. You know, there was an agent. An agent told me that I had a face that would scare small children. Look at me. I am the, I'm the host of The Tonight Show. Helen Kushnick got it for me. And she could lose it for you, too. Great, you know? Superman 7... 
17 years, you know, it's an awful long... Her son died of AIDS, you know. Hospital gave him a bad transfusion. A three-year-old baby. It was a terrible tragedy, Jake. Husband, nobody saying. Colon cancer. He died a year after that. She had a mastectomy. I what Helen Jerry has been on his deathbed. On his deathbed, he asked me to take care I of her. I recognize you have intense feelings about this. You have every reason to feel loyalty to Helen, but we're past that. Now, I was a psychology major in college, and what John and I are doing with you now, we would have to call an intervention. What you see as loyalty to a woman who has suffered deeply, we see as a form of addiction. Now, she cannot continue to produce a television show in this condition. Helen is either going to take you down or you are going to separate from her, but she is not going to take me down. She is fired. If we have to, we'll bar her from the lot. <laughs> I'm, you, I... What, what, if, what if I were to walk out with it? Well, if you can't separate from Helen, it's a big mistake. I regret it, but we have choices to make. And the choice I have to make is to tell David Letterman that it's time to take over The Tonight Show. And I, I suspect that uh, Peter LaSalle and David could be in Burbank on 24 hours' notice. You guys would do that to me? I would absolutely do that. That's how strongly we feel. I need a commitment from you, Jay. Will you be at work tomorrow? Is what you're saying is that if I don't come to work, I'm going to be fired. I'm not saying that exactly. But is that what you mean? You mean that I'm going to be fired if I don't show up for work? Jay, are you looking for some legal justification for breaking with Helen? John, it's a simple question. Just tell me. If I don't come to work tomorrow, are you going to fire me? Yes, I guess we're, this, we're saying that. You guys can let yourself out. Goalie I handed this to me when I came in. They're firing me. I told them you'd never stand for this. What do you want me to do about it, Helen? Issue a statement backing me, then we just go on with the show. Oh, just like that, aren't you still fired? Not if you don't accept it. They'll never let you go. All you have to do is threaten to quit. They'll okay. They got no ball. No ball. You know not... what they told me? You know what they told me? They told me they were gonna fire me and bring in David. That's what they told oh, me. Bullshit. It's not bullshit. bullshit. No, These they were guys no hate Letterman. All we got to do is stay strong, honey. No, you know, everything, it's all out of control now. It's hey, all... hold it. What? Don't you give me this shit, too. Not you. Who the hell do you think pulled you out of those shithole clubs? Huh? Who got you on television? On Letterman? I remember. You who wasn't blonde, who wasn't from the Midwest? 15 years ago, this town, the Carson people? They wouldn't let you play on their field. So I had to move the game. Oh, sorry, assholes, the game's over here now. I moved the game. Who the hell do you think forced Carson out so you could get the best fucking job in comedy? Forced Carson out? Johnny quit. Sure he quit, because he couldn't take the heat anymore. I got the affiliates on your side. I got the network to kiss your Italian ass. I got page one of the fucking New York Post to bury that fossil Carson. All well, for you. Oh, 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 what do you mean you got page one of the Post? You told me that we didn't have anything to do with that story. Oh, for Christ's sake, grow up. You lied to me? Look, we've always played the same game. You never want to know what I'm doing for you so you can be Mr. Nice Guy. Book and war? What do I know? Helen handles that. I do the jokes. You just want me to keep serving you the steaks. You never want to know how I'm slaughtering the cow. I can't believe you lied to me. We needed the story. It helped us. I did it for you. Yeah, I, I called Johnny, and I told him it didn't come from us because you told me that it didn't come from us. I can't, I mean, I can't believe you had me lie to Johnny Carson. Big fucking deal. So go to fucking confession. I got a show to do, Helen. God damn it! Guess so. What are you doing? 
doing? Jay, honey, let's get this ironed out. We can work something out with NBC. Oh, no, they, they want you out. So do I. What about taking care of me and my kid? You sat there on Jerry's deathbed. You said, I'll take care of your wife and daughter. I heard you say that. Yeah, I did say that. I did say that, you know what? And I meant it then. But now, I mean, you know, you're, Helen, you almost cost me this job. You don't need this job. Listen, I've been on the phone. I, I guarantee us a job, 25 million. We can walk out of here. Goodbye, Helen. Don't you leave me, you two-faced bastard. What do, you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to, you want to break this? You want to break this? It's broken. Office. Yeah, it's James again. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Warren. Okay. Help me through this. Absolutely. Help me through it. I'm moving forward with you. I'm doing this show. Great. She's no longer the executive producer. I'm no longer in business with Helen Kushnick. I have a few things I want to say, and I'll just yeah, take okay. a, it'll just take a few minutes, okay? Come on. Come on in. Great show tonight, first, I should say that. Um, so I, I just I wanted to uh, just take a few minutes to apologize for all the craziness that's been going on around here the past few months. Uh, you know, I, I listened to Helen, and, and it was a mistake, and I shouldn't have done it, and I'm sorry for it. So please stay with me. I, I'm going to try to make it up to each and every one of you, and, and let's just keep doing the best shows that we can do, all right? So to you, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go, Jay. Good job, man. We're behind you. All right. I to put away by this. place oh my god there's more fruit in here is it scurvy mike can you see it is it on my skin uh pete uh, have a seat and take that silly rug off will you <laughs> now morty for god's sake straighten your tie this isn't a tractor pull all right here we go let's get this thing started well these are summaries of all the offers that david has on the table they're all in the same range 12 to 14 million a year depending on how well you do we also have a couple of those oversized syndication offers, like the 50 million from Viacom. Uh, listen, uh, syndication gives me the uh, willies. I'm not. Uh... He wants a network. Now, ABC passed because we wouldn't accept midnight after Nightline. Fox is, well, Fox is Fox. They're about three quarters of a network at best. So that leaves us with CBS. Suddenly, our options are narrowed. Listen. The good news is, David, that CBS has really stepped up. They're offering you 12.5, but that, of course, will escalate as your demographics improve. Yeah, but Mike, what did they say about the clearance issue? I mean, look, NBC is putting uh, The Tonight Show on, what, 99% of their We're only going to get about 65% of the affiliates in year one. I, well, but Howard I... Stringer promises that they'll get it up to 90% by the end of year three at the very, very latest. Now, in spite of these limitations, Dave, I think the Stringer is an extremely competent executive. And if you go to CBS, there is no doubt that you will become their number one signature star. And I can't put a price tag on that. There is one problem that we now have to deal with, and that is that NBC still has the right to match this offer within 30 days. So uh, NBC matches the offer, and I'm, I'm stuck at uh, NBC at 12.30 for the rest of my life. Not necessarily. We've come up with something extra. The CBS deal has a penalty clause. CBS agrees to give you a show that airs before midnight Eastern time or they owe you $50 million. $50 million? Man. Well, that's no penalty. That's capital punishment. Well, it's not even going to face CBS because they're giving you 1130 anyway. But it's going to make NBC choke. <laughs> cool. It is CAA's formal recommendation that you accept the CBS offer 
and so inform NBC. Congratulations, Dave. <laughs> Taxi! Hey, where are you going? I got a date downtown. Really? Another one? Who's left? Plenty. <laughs> David. You know, there's still one promise that uh, Obitz hasn't kept. Yeah, well, uh, maybe NBC is happy with what they got. If NBC were to offer you The Tonight Show, would you still accept it? You know, we've had this uh, conversation, of course I would. You know, I, I want that show. I just wanted to hear you say it again. All right, let's go. Where are you going? Pete? <laughs> David? Bob Wright is here to see you. Here? Mm hmm Hello, David. Hey, Bob. How are you? Good, Good to see you. Me Thanks too. for coming. Uh, Pete, why don't you come on in? I'm sorry. I have things to do down the hall. Thanks, Peter. You bet, Bob. Uh, hey, uh, Bob, uh, uh, thanks for coming on down. Oh, thank you for having me. Make yourself at home. Oh, you like that? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you own it. <laughs> David, I, I really don't want you to leave your family here at NBC. I'm here because I want desperately to prevent that. I want to offer anything I can. Is there anything I can offer to get you to stay? Well, those are uh, warm sentiments, uh, Bob. Thank you. Um, well, of course, you know I would stay, but you've already filled your 1130 slot. I can offer almost anything else. Primetime specials. I know, this I know, Bob, I know, Bob. Listen, I know, I, it's just I, uh, prime time and uh, I'm a creature of late night. You know, I always had been. I mean, that's who my audience is. You know, the guys on the West Coast say that you may have trouble adjusting to 11.30. All right, listen, I... Those guys are entitled to their opinion, but I'm telling you, I think that they're wrong. And I, I think that I am ready. I've given a lot of thought uh, to what it would take to shift to, to an 11.30 position. I know it's a different audience. And if that means uh, booking different... Uh, types of guests or, or country music mixed in with the rock or whatever it takes. Uh, I, and I can also uh, temper my own act. Bob, I, I'm a professional. I know how to do that. Well, I have no doubt that you can. And I see that you have given this a lot of thought. Well, I have. Good. Uh, but uh, all the same, I just have to tell you that I, it's time. I mean, I got to move up. And if I don't do it now, I'm not ever going to do it. It's time to move. See you at the conference. Okay. Yeah, big time. Time. John. Betty. Have you heard anything new from Ovitz? Nothing new, nothing old. Lots of nothing. Nothing. Great. Bob. Well, Warren. So, uh, what's Wright saying? He says he's waiting to hear from Ovitz. He's leaning towards Letterman. Well, I know. I told Jay. West Coast is behind him, but I can't speak for New York. You worried about Boca? Oh, once again, Jay and Dave are in competition with one another. You know, now, <laughs> New York likes Dave so much, they don't want to let him go. Jimmy, I like Dave. You know, I mean, he's my friend. I love this show. I'm not asking them to not like Dave. I, why does it have to be either or? You know, these network guys. You know, they can't make up their mind. They think they can just flip a coin. Dave or Jay, Jay or Dave, it doesn't matter to them. But you think that's what the meeting's about, choosing between you and Dave? I don't, I don't care what the meeting's about. I'll, I've given them everything they've asked for. I've given them the demos. I've given them the numbers. If I'm the one going down, I'm going down swinging. Hey, where's Rick Ludwin? You know, I left to be in on that conference call from Boca. <laughs> Guess what that's going to be about. <laughs> And you know, hey, everyone, I'm going to uh, cut the postmortem a little short tonight. I got some things to do, but it was a great show, really. Great show. Thanks for. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. Thanks, Alex, right, Scott, Rick, Bye. Debbie, Bye. thanks. Bye. All right, and I'll, uh, I'll see you at the house later. Yeah. All right, okay, thanks.
we're here to discuss and hear out everybody's opinion on what we should do about late night. Well, I think this should have been settled long before now. Uh, Jay has the job. He's doing great. He has a great attitude. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, I thought we were here to talk this thing out, not to do some self-serving commercial. Well, I, I, I mean, if you I... want the executive producer job that bad, Rick, Kiss Jay's ass in private, okay? I, I didn't mean to. We all see the job that Jay is doing. I don't think I Selection represented musical myself. Musical acts, unoriginal comedy past the monologue, and his piss poor interviewing, which, by the way, looks like it'll never get any better. Let's talk about what we think it'll really cost us to match CBS's offer for Letterman. And on the other hand, if Leno quits to go to CBS, are we out from under the $10 million that we'd owe him if we fired him? Warren, I've got no. some serious concerns here, and I don't think you can just throw off Warren, Jay not... with, oh, with Jack, a couple of... Jack. In... Very good of you to come so late. Oh, Hi, Jack. No, oh, please, yeah. sit. And keep talking, everybody. I'm just here to listen. Sorry it's so warm. The air conditioning went out. <laughs> um, Warren, why don't you continue? Oh, all right. Well, uh, my fear is that Letterman won't cooperate. It isn't in his personality. He'll stiff us. I mean, you know, remember, this is the guy who kicks NBC executives out of his anniversary party. That's an old story. And that is so petty. Me. I mean, look. Excuse me for a minute. There's still a serious question that his act can play an hour earlier, and a lot of us think And don't forget, with Leno, we own the show again. Letterman wants to own his show. Then he has all the ancillary profits. May I say something here? Jack, please, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm not a regular late-night viewer, so I wouldn't presume to make a call about who's the best comedian. <laughs> All I want to say is this. As always, I'm for whatever is the best business deal. That's for you, Bob, and your people to determine. However, if the decision comes down to a tie on all angles, well, I'd cast my vote for loyalty. Jack. No, good night. Good, good night, good night, Jack. Thanks very much for dropping by. I think that about wraps it up, folks. We'll, we'll meet again tomorrow. What I am worried about is what we will look like Throw out the loyal dog. We'll be cast as opportunistic venal shits. It'll be Polly Norville all over again. Betty, how the hell is this Polly Norville? Hey, Warren, it's Jay. How you doing? Hey, uh, you know, you're probably, you know, all tired from sitting through those boring GE meetings all morning. I bet you I'm catching you just as you're about to sit down in the toilet. That was quite a meeting you had last night, you know that. Uh, you know, I, I hope that GE protects its nuclear secrets better than they protect their late-night secrets. I, uh, I thought it was too bad, you know, to hear that Dick Ebersole was no Jay Leno fan, although it was good to know that uh, Jack Welch was in favor of uh, loyalty, you know, as long as it came down to a tie on all angles. Holy shit, Jay, how the hell did you get your information? Well, you know, I, I may look stupid, but I'm Italian. I, I know how to find information. Listen, listen, Jay, don't tell anybody about this. Well, you know, you don't have to worry. Your secrets are safe with me. I won't break the GE code. Listen, just uh, have a wonderful time in beautiful, sunny Florida. <laughs> Let's see how bad we can write tomorrow's. John, you have uh, some top ten what? Yeah, the top ten reasons Sinead O'Connor hates the Pope. That's good. Let's no, do it. No, 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 no can do. We Why got a not? memo from NBC. Standards and practices is rip shit over her tearing the Pope in half on Saturday Night Live. I don't care. Write no the jokes. No Sinead O'Connor jokes, Dave. And now NBC's uh, telling us uh, what jokes we can and can't They're do. What's next? Are they going to serve a uh, tasty uh, hot uh, meal on my desk? Apparently. All right, uh, top ten jokes that uh, NBC won't let us do. <laughs> Peter liked it. Peter liked that joke. Laura, you like that joke? Yeah. Uh, my COVID's is on line one. All right, fellas, let's go. I got to take this call. Come on, it's Adult Swim. Get out of here. And don't come back uh, until it's funny. You guys want to hear this? Oh yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. Hiya, Mike. How are you? Dave, one hour ago, Bob Wright conveyed to us an offer for you to host the Tonight Show. Now, don't jump to any conclusions. Let me lay all this out. The deal is three years with an option. The salary range is seven to 12 million. Now, here's the wrinkle. The deal does not commence until May of 1994, 18 months from now. 
Uh, what, uh, what, what's all that about? Well, it's rather transparently NBC's attempt to keep both you and Leno, at least for a while. The May date, as I understand it, coincides with the end of Leno's contract as the host of The Tonight Show. Uh, but I get the show. Yes. I just don't get it now. No. I get it a, a year from May. Yes. And uh, they don't uh, force uh, Jay out, right? No, unless he quits, which I assume that he might. Maybe that's what they want him to do. They're going to Jay's going to quit. Not a chance. Not a chance, bro. Jesus, can you believe this? They're going to. Dave, let me point out a few more things. CBS is offering more salary. CBS is offering ownership. CBS is also offering for the show to start in the fall. NBC the following spring. Maybe. What do you, what's that? What's maybe? Well, I mean that the deal is obviously very smoky in many details. But I get the show, right? No, not necessarily, David. The waiting period gives Jay 18 months to make the show a hit, and if he does, you can bet NBC will find a way to weasel out of the deal. Honestly, Dave, CAA sees no reason to change its recommendation. Mike, listen, I, you don't understand. Uh, it is every driver's dream to drive a Ferrari, and now you're asking me to give that up. Well, I could probably buy some time. The NBC deadline is Monday. I could get a goalie in here on Saturday and Sunday and have him start drawing up some Yes, money. yes, get a goalie in there. I'm not going to be the only uh, guy whose weekend is ruined by this. Get, have a goalie and drag his tired ass over to CAA while I'm uh, up in uh, Connecticut in hell trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do with my life. Dave? Dave? What? Hello, David. Ah, hiya, Pete. Welcome to my weekend in hell. Hee-hee-yah! <laughs> no movement since Friday. No. And the goalie's not putting anything in writing. Yeah, Ovid says uh, NBC can't take the risk that it'll leak. And Jay will figure out that they offered his job to me. Can you imagine if the press heard about this? You think Jay knows? No. How can he? But, David, it is worth thinking about what it will mean to Jay if you take this. It means that you will be denounced in the press for shoving an old friend under a train. Jeez. Oh, I mean, that, that's, that's horrible. I can't worry about that. Have you talked to anybody else? Yeah, I talked to everybody. I talked to Hal, uh, Morty, Rob, Jude. And what did they say? They all uh, they said the same thing. It's a shitty deal. CBS offered a better one. I tell you, Pete, I'm still thinking of taking it. I want that show. What show? I deserve that show. Johnny's show. Don't you get it, David? They are not offering you the Johnny Carson Tonight Show that is gone forever. They're offering you damaged goods. They're offering you the Jay Leno Show. And they're not even offering it now. They're making you wait. I lost that show once, Pete. I'm not going to do it again. I can't. I just can't say no. Then don't say yes yet. Make one more phone call. Oh, jeez. Why are you doing this to me? Don't you understand? I don't care. I cannot lose The Tonight Show twice. Once to Jay Leno, and once because I was too dumb to take a second chance. They're offering me a second chance, Pete. David, you don't understand. I am the guy that moved heaven and earth to get you that second chance, and I'm telling you, it's not right. It's leftovers, it's shoddy. Call the one guy in all the world who can help you figure this out. Hello? Uh, Johnny, it's Dave. I, uh... I hate to bother you on a Sunday like this, but, uh... I know why you're calling, Dave. Uh, Peter filled me in on the NBC offer. Listen, it, I, I just hate to put you on the spot like this, but, um... You, you may be the only guy uh, who really understands this sort of thing, and I... What do you think? I think you gotta do what's best for your career. I mean, do, do what's in your heart. <laughs> well... Johnny, it's just those two things seem to be in, in, in direct conflict here, right? It's just so tough. And I'm... I, I just have to ask you straight out, Johnny. What would you do? Well, Dave, I would probably walk. Now, I'm not telling you to do that.
But if you're asking me what I would do... If I was treated like this, yeah, I, uh... I would probably walk. Yeah, I imagine you would, Johnny. Uh, listen, I just really appreciate this. It's just awfully nice of you, and I... I, uh... Thanks. Good luck, Dave. Everybody wants to know what's going on in late night, and the answer is the host of The Tonight Show will continue to be Jay Leno. Don't let these NBC guys out of your sight. Not out of your sight at all. Oh, hey, everyone. How are you? How are you? Like to... Welcome to NBC, which stands for Never Believe Your Contract. <laughs> it's just, you know, they say, uh, they say that we live in a time of lowered expectations. You know, you know they, they, they must be right, because, I mean, look at this. You're all here, and I have the job. <laughs> what we're celebrating is that I haven't been fired. <sighs> OK. No, please, please. Let's go. It's our turn now. I'll call you a moron and get my paycheck out. Our circumstance to the next. Never dated Amy Fisher. I, I, I helped her of her homework. I, I fixed her car, and that's it. Thank you. Good night. Uh, what about Paul Schaefer? Is is he coming along? Paul who? Paul Schaefer. Oh, Paul Schaefer. Uh, uh, oh no, God, we forgot to, we forgot about Paul. Uh, Howard, uh, is there just a little bit left over for Paul Schaefer? <laughs> Dave. Dave. Yeah. Are you going to kick Jay Leno's ass? I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a call me to hip for 1130? Well, uh, you people seem to be keeping up. <laughs> you realize what we've got riding on Jay Leno? A whole lot of money in my ass. Dave's really good. I hope we haven't made a mistake. <laughs>